over the last uh, few months, a uh, few of the students and graduate students in architectural studies specializing in digital media collaborated with the students, the capstone students in journalism to explore uh, 3D technology for uh, telling stories. And what we have seen in the last couple of years is there is a sudden resurgence in 3D technology. You know, 3D has been around for a long time. Um, we've seen 3D movies for a long time, but with uh, most of these uh, uh, devices now uh, hitting the mainstream, uh, we've seen Oculus Rift, we've seen Samsung Gear VR, we have Sony Morpheus, there is Google Cardboard, a whole bunch of uh, sort of personalized VR devices, plus there is new uh, uh, augmented reality glasses, mobile-based uh, augmented reality uh, technology, and then there is Magic Leap, which we all uh, hear about, but no one has really uh, uh, you know, seen much of in terms. So there is all this exciting technology, and how can we take advantage of that? And recently, uh, many of you saw the Harvest of Change project by the Des Moines Register with uh, Gennett Digital, and where they used uh, 360 videos uh, and uh, um, you know, uh, Unity 3D uh, game engine platform to develop these uh, immersive, interactive kind of experience. So conceptually, we can think of uh, uh, you know, 3D content for journalism in, in, into, classified into two categories. One is sort of the capture using these uh, 360 3D cameras, or uh, you can create these content from ground up using 3D modeling and animation tools. And we wanted to look at a story that lent itself uh, well to do both. And uh, this was about the same time MU was celebrating its 175th uh, anniversary with the, you know, uh, and the textile apparel management, which has a wonderful historic costume collection. They put on a special exhibit about these uh, costumes or so, you know, clothes associated with famous personalities in MU's history. And that is, was something that was interesting to us because not only there was an interesting story there, but also there is enough uh, technical challenges. So the students uh, tackled two things. One is to uh, create a 3D video and also to create a fully you know, immersive 3D, uh, interactive 3D uh, showcase uh, of, the, of the clothes. So George will take it from here. Hi, so we wanted to create a two-layered story that works on the captured reality side of the capture versus created reality distinction Bamal just made. We wanted to show both the Mizzou Historic 175th costume collection, but really use that as a vehicle to showcase all the different 3D technologies that are available right now. So we created this video where a student goes through and uses a bunch of different technologies as a way to show, in this instance, it's for costumes, but you could use this for many different journalistic applications. So we have a uh, brief video that's the first raw shot uh, of the scene, so we can talk a little bit about the filmmaking techniques that go into making a 3D video. So this is uh, an anaglyphic 3D, so it's, um, you know, static, you just use the red and, red and blue glasses. And if uh, the, the red should be on the left, if uh, that's not the case. So. Yes, red on the left side. So, need to turn the glasses. what we want to do with every shot is make sure that we create depth in the shot because just like using black and white or color photography, 3D gives us another layer of uh, data to work with, and that is depth. So we wanted to make sure that we had something in every part of the frame. And instead of using cuts, we tried to do a lot more fluid uh, shots. And this one she's using, um, we have this mock-up of a 3D Facebook application where she would find a 3D story and be able to share it both to a, either a 3D TV or the room or to share it with her friends. And because this technology already exists, we want to showcase that the only thing stopping people from using it is people using it. And we want to show that there would be an easy way to make that happen. She has now transferred the 3D video to the 3D TV in the room after also sharing it with her friends. And our next scene in this video, we're about to zoom in, and the second shot will start from this frame as we go in there. And we'll transition from this full screen to this whole screen and then pull out so you're already acclimated to this 3D video. And the next scene will start from the last one from where that one leaves off. So we want to showcase that 3D technology exists, that you can use it, and that there's many applications for it. So there are a lot of applications with 3D, but with all of that comes challenges as well that you have to keep in mind. The three main challenges when producing videos in 3D, the first one being depth planning. 
There are a lot of layers to a story, the foreground, middle ground, and the background, so you have to keep the layers relevant to your story when you add them. Another challenge is transitioning, like George mentioned before, when you, you have to acclimatize your viewers to what you're seeing, and you don't want the transition to be very jarring, so your transitions have to be very, they have to provide a point of continuity for each scene. And the third challenge, is, which is a major challenge, is that there are a lot of different output um, devices for 3D videos. There's the passive devices, you have variable devices like Oculus, and then you have the active monitors like Acer, and for each one you have to render your video specifically to that. So that's something else that you have to keep in mind. One of the great aspects of uh, more immersive technology is that it allows us to represent spaces, objects, and information more interactively uh, for the users. Uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, the immersive uh, or the interactive uh, this, the gallery we created for these costumes. Uh, we start by a panoramic image uh, to help the user locate themselves in this interactive uh, place. This is actually, you can move around and doors will open and information will pop. But to save us some time to get to the costume exhibit, I'll go ahead and kind of jump directly towards it. Uh, in EQ, you can see some of the challenges that we had to face. For example, creating a user interface to be able to navigate uh, a space uh, well. Uh, this is, uh, a, a recreation of Gwyn Lounge. Uh, it's a historic room here in, on campus. And to get this to this level, we had to take lots of photo reference, photo images, uh, floor, we use floor plans, uh, we use rough 3D scans to get things as accurately as we could. Uh, and we can walk around and interact with everything uh, here. And, the, and these uh, dresses were all scanned using the structure sensor. And as you get closer to them, information will pop and on the relevance of these costumes and the person that owned them and their relationship to the University of Missouri. For example, this one was owned by Ms. Catherine Middlebush. And uh, I can also uh, jump towards middle, jump to Middlebush Hall here and look around as well as different places that were very relevant to the history of uh, Mizzou. So, uh, let me just minimize this. All right. Uh, to create something like this, it takes a lot of planning. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we use floor plans. On the bottom left, you will be able to see uh, a rough 3D scan that we took with using the structure sensor. Uh, the middle red, uh, tiled image is of the different textures that you can use in the costumes. Uh, the bottom image shows a 360 photograph of the uh, different environments that we also used photos to recreate as opposed to the ones we created from scratch using 3D modeling and uh, CAD tools. Uh, we also need to be able to put in different kinds of models and also a lot of scripting that goes into the interaction and being able to navigate through these spaces and, and uh, creating the, that experience. Uh, this shows you the, the process that goes through creating just one of the dresses. Uh, from left to right, you'll be able to see the original dress, which we 3D scanned using the structure sensor. Uh, when you scan something, it sometimes brings a lot of uh, errors, uh, just because the technology doesn't know what you want, so it, it, it might catch the platform it's sitting on, or you might miss a spot while scanning it. So you can put it into a program like Mesh Mixer and clean it up and uh, eventually simplify that mesh, as you can see in the middle images, and directly paint and, and stretch it out and directly paint your textures onto it. After that, we use reference images, detailed shots, and uh, texture the entire model, and now it's ready for either animation, any kind of interaction, or for use in a 3D game engine, as we did in Unity here. Uh, I'll take it uh, to Asan to talk a little bit about the user interface. Uh, we needed uh, some user interfaces and information panel for our uh, 3D content, so we created those information panels. We had some challenges, uh, for example, uh, selecting buttons for on 
uh, head-mounted displays uh, was another uh, was uh, a challenge for us. Uh, we had to create different level of transparency and visibility for user interfaces on different platforms and devices, and we uh, we had to make the information more simple and readable on different platforms. Uh, there were some also uh, advantages uh, of using uh, uh, user interfaces and formation panel for 3D content. Uh, transition of 3D uh, information to into uh, 3D content, I mean uh, 3D uh, immersive content. Uh, the uh, user can see the information with different uh, perspective. And we created some menus and UIs for uh, navigation through the Im immersive 3D content. Uh, one challenge was uh, we needed a different level of transparency and visibility. For example, uh, on Oculus, uh, we needed, uh, we used just the gaze-based navigation uh, without needing moving the mouse and you can just look at the button and select the button and navigate through the menu. And uh, we also needed to add in a level of depth to the flat UIs. And uh, with those kind of user interfaces, we can add a le another level of interactivity and we can use them on a variety of content. We also developed a database, uh, including several hundreds of uh, technologies, uh, softwares, and hardwares, which are using in uh, 3D virtual reality and augmented reality field. Uh, uh, we uh, gathered information about devices to create, capture, edit, and display 3D and virtual reality contents. Uh, for news and for journalism. And we also uh, categorize those based on their level of interactivity, multimodality, and other criteria that are useful in uh, journalism and displaying information. So with everything that you've seen with 3D videos, there are some strengths and opportunities and weakness and challenges when you take into consideration when you're moving to 3D. Some of the strengths and challenges is that it's an immersive interactive storytelling and then when you get into the story, there's a lot of detail to focus on, there's a lot of information to gather and that heightens your awareness in, about the story that you're into. And there's also the opportunity for 3D ads to generate more revenue for your company. And some other uh, challenges that you need to focus on and weaknesses about 3D video is that you need a lot of devices to, to showcase what you're doing. You need, you need it on the production end and you need it on the, con excuse me, the consumer end. You also have a steep learning curve with using the editing programs and the cost of investing into 3D is also considerable. So you have to keep these, all of these things in mind when you're moving into 3D video. Thank you.